Eh, well, eh, welcome everybody to the second semester of the Chilean Probability Seminar. Eh, today we have the pleasure to have with us Bruno Tigliotto. Well, I did what I could. <laughs> uh, so he's uh, visiting us on CMM for the whole year. Until the summer, end of the summer. And, until the end of, the, of yeah. this summer. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have any doubts, of course you can ask after the, the talk, but also you can go and knock on his office. Seven, it's like over there. <laughs> Seven to one. <laughs> yes. Uh, so he will discuss with us uh, this zero sum random games on T2. Thank you very much for the introduction and uh, for the, the invitation. So as I said, you said, um, I'm, I will stay until December and uh, I'm again theorist, but I'm interested uh, in uh, problems that have uh, many interactions with other fields like uh, particularly probability theory. So if, if you want to discuss at any moment, I would be very happy to talk to you about uh, some simple problems in probability that I am not able to solve and that hopefully I yeah, yeah, have better ideas to, to solve. Uh, and also to discuss about uh, anything in probability. Uh, so today it, um, it's based on um, some work with uh, Avelio and the other co-authors. Uh, and um, it's, um, it's a very simple environment. We are going to, to, um, to look uh, at the Z2, but uh, rotated uh, 45 degrees, just because it should be more convenient for our purpose. Mathematically, it does not uh, have any significance, but it could be easier to see. And so we are going, we are going to, um, to uh, draw uh, a random uh, numbers, zero or one should be a binary model, uh, according to some uh, Bernoulli of uh, para some parameter in zero one on, uh, on edges. So we equip each edge with uh, some uh, random number, either zero or one, and it's, uh, and it's IID. So you will recognize a very classic model of uh, percolation. So uh, of course it's extremely uh, well uh, well studied, and um, what are very famous uh, problems that are partly solved is uh, does there exist some uh, infinite path? So it could be oriented or it could be non-oriented. You can also uh, what do you mean oriented? Like oriented, for example, uh, some path like this is oriented, like in some direction. But, uh, like not a not a not a path that would uh, do things like this. It's an interaction, so it, just to give a picture. But but the the Bernoulli defines if the edge is is present or not, or what what's the Bernoulli? Uh, sorry, I don't know the most. Uh, sorry, so it's just numbers. Uh, yeah, this would be the interpretation. Some people interpret it as a, an edge is cut or not, but uh, for us, it will just be numbers. It will be at the end. It will be like cost. So uh, when I say that infinite path of one, it's a path that is composed only with one. So for example, uh -huh. a path that looks like this. And uh, it's really good. Or it would be like it goes. Uh, it doesn't go back to itself. I mean, it goes in one direction. Ah. No, no, I didn't mean it can't uh, circumvent like this. Ah. Okay. So. For us, it will, it will be um, like zero one will represent the like cost of uh, players. So interpreting uh, the zero one as uh, as cost, uh, 
some other classical question is to, uh, to study uh, uh, the average uh, minimum minimal cost. Of, uh, going, uh, from uh, origin to to some point. At the, at the distance, say n, and uh, and uh, study what happens when uh, n goes to infinity. So it's also a very broad uh, area of research. So it's the mini model for passage percolation, last, last passage percolation. We are not going to study specifically this, just to give you. Uh, I mean, at least where I started with all this. Um, and basically, when you we start to study an average minimal cost of going from some point to some other point, you could say uh, you could reformulate, reformulate it as a one payoff for n. Like there is one payoff that tries to go from one point to the other uh, and try to minimize its cost. Uh, and um, and us, we will go one step further and add a second payoff. So they have two player model. So there is this motivation that okay, in the literature the there were well, kind of one player problem, so it's natural to the second player. Uh, a, a second a second motivation is uh, is in fact it's connected to uh, it's also where uh, I went on from this problem. It, it's connected to continuous time, continuous time problems, so namely uh, two players continuous time problems that um, that can be studied through uh, a set of partial differential equations that is called Hampton Jacobi equations. Um, and essentially, when when you you ask this type of question of uh, what is the average linear cost of going from some point to the other, uh, it will be equivalent for this type of games to studying. Uh, limiting behavior of uh, the partial differential equation. So well, again, I'm not going to talk to you about this, but if I were, I were to just give uh, some few words. Uh, it's related to stochastic homogenization of, uh, of Hamilton Jacobi equation. So it's not only about game theory, it's also, it can be used to to study some uh, problem raising partial uh, differential equations. But it would be uh, too long to talk about this, so I will not talk about this. But uh, yeah, so basically, it's a bit as an interface between game theory, practice theory, and, and, and some problems in partial differential equations. So now uh, I will uh, describe the, uh, the model. So we'll keep this uh, the two where that would remember that there are zero one one everywhere according to uh, some boundaries. So now we have two players that are adversary. So it's what we call zero sum. So player one has uh, two actions, uh, top or bottom, and player two has also two actions, left or right. Uh, and how the game proceeds, there will be, you have to imagine that there is a token. So you have a, a token that is, uh, is placed in, uh, in some vertex. We have some initial uh, initial uh, vertex, so which is an element of of Z two, and then it's a repeated interaction. 
And uh, at each stage, player will each choose uh, some action in turn. So at, at each stage, uh, play uh, T. Uh, player one chooses T or B. And play two chooses, and then not simultaneous move. Then uh, player one plays uh, C of ET to player two. So what is this T? T are uh, the, uh, the, uh, the ID uh, cost. So we, we interpret the zero and one as ID cost. Uh, so to each edge, there is a cost. Um, and so this ET will be uh, will be defined uh, recursively uh, as 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 follows. So um, then um, uh, the token moves uh, moves uh, from uh, one edge and I think it's better to do a drawing. I will just draw how it works. We'll see it's very simple. So the idea that the token starts uh, in some um, in some vertex and it will be moved by players. So imagine at, at stage T, the verb, the we are here. So this is like uh, the the T uh, uh, position of the token. Then if uh, player one chooses top and uh, player uh, uh, two chooses uh, left, this is where we go. This is the uh, Z plus one. So this is uh, top uh, left. Uh, this is top right. This is uh, bottom left. And this is bottom right. So. At each stage, each one chooses an action. This determines just one move of the token according to one of the edge. Um, and uh, you pay a cost that is uh, the edge that you, you use. The token moves from ZT to ZT plus one, and uh, pair one pays. Pay the, the age, uh, the cost of the, of the cost of the So it's zero sum, so pair one, uh, pay two, pay two. Okay, so imagine that it's like zero, zero, one, zero. So here you pay a zero, here zero, zero, and here one. Is it clear the model? 
Um, well, except that you had you had said the order in which this is chosen. Sorry. So, in which order? Chosen. Ah, player one choose it first. Okay, and then yeah. player. Ah, okay. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Okay, so, then, so, so yeah. and they, they know all realizations of the costs or uh... yeah, so it's perfect information game, so so the realization is not complete. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry. Yes. The, the red uh, the, the red color doesn't look so well in the camera. Ah, uh, sorry, yeah. No, anyway, I should not hide it. Sorry. Thank yeah. you. So before the game starts, you get a, a grid of uh, 0 and 1, uh, drawn ID, and uh, you announce the player or the radiation, and they just play in a, in a grid of 0 and 1. So what is the uh, strategy? Because we have to define uh, uh, how we aggregate all the payoff, because so far uh, players uh, play many stages. So how do we aggregate this payoff? So first, we need to define what is the strategy. So basically, a strategy in game theory is always uh, like a, a, a mapping that assigns to each uh, possible history of the game some decision. So what is the history? It's the information that uh, one player has. So strategy of player one uh, uh, is a mapping, sigma. That assigns some, uh, some action. Stop button. Each history. So the history will be uh, where we started, then which um, uh, which edge we used at the following stage until uh, T minus one. And, and this, you have to say it for each possible time. So to each possible time, you have to say what you are going to do according to what you observed in the past. And for play 2, it's almost the same, except that uh, player 2 has an extra information, is that he plays seconds, so he knows player 1's action before choosing the match. I had a player one action. This is player one action. Yeah, and I am. Uh, I can define the the payoff. So the payoff will be defined as uh, gamma z sigma tau as uh, the the limb soup of uh, the average. Right. 
So I take for each possible uh, initial state strategies, I take the limb soup of the average state. So this is a randomizer. And then you can define the, the value of the game. Which is V of Z uh, is the, um, the min max of our. Uh, so player one uh, minimizes okay, because he pays the cost, and player two maximizes of uh, the, uh, the average here. Why is it the limb soup and not the limb? Uh, so everything that I would say will be the same for limb and limb. I just have to make a choice. I choose. I chose to make player one slide difficult, but because player one minimizes. But uh, but it's not important for that. What I'm going to say. Sometimes it matters. There are so many examples where it's the same. So if you are not familiar with this notion of values, you can just uh, keep in mind that the value represents the outcome of the game in terms of payoff uh, <coughs> when players play optimally, when they are rational. If so you imagine that players are smart, the outcome of the game should be that player one should get V of Z, and uh, player two should get minus V of Z, because it's a zero-sum game. Uh, if you are more familiar with min max theorem, uh, let's say that the fact that min max is equal to max min is not uh, obvious. It's, uh, it's a theorem from uh, Martin, 1975, uh, that treats this a very large class of game that includes this one. Um, today, I will not focus on the game theoretic uh, aspects, but I won't detail this. But it means that you can define some solution of this game. And then the question is, uh, what is uh, what is uh, V of Z? Can we say something uh, about it? Yeah, are there any questions so far? So they choose these things sequentially, and each one does it in terms of the history of what, like, they know the history of the choices of the previous, of the other player before. And yeah. In principle, the strategy of each can depend on the on the whole history. Yeah, so this is how I define it. I define the whole history of edges, but you can recover from edges, you can recover everything that happened in the game. Yeah, I understand. But, but I mean that, that's for P2, but P1 is also looking at all the, the choices that P2 yeah. has made before. And... Yeah. Yeah. So you may think that you should not have to to remember this, that you, you should always play according to where you are, right. like in a stationary way. But I think it's far, it's not far, it's far from abuse, and I don't have any answer about this. It's also an interesting question to, okay. to look whether there is optimal strategies that are not too complicated. Um, so the first result is that um, a V of Z of Z, which is supposed to depend on the initial ver uh, vertex, uh, is independent of Z. Of Z. Moreover, it's, it could be a random variable, but it's not, meaning that it's uh, almost surely a constant. So it means that basically when you look at very uh, very long games, um, uh, somehow you you forget the, the initial state. It doesn't matter where where you start. Um, so so um, I will show a bit the proof. So first, the fact that U of Z is independent of Z.
can I erase this? Yeah. Maybe one more question, Bruno. Uh, so, yeah. uh, the fact that the min max equals uh, the maximum uh, uh, relies on the fact that you're looking at this limit. Are you, I mean, no, if you take any me measurable uh, bounded function of uh, histories, it will work. No, but if, if, you, if you consider like a finite uh, horizon uh, game, uh, because you're not allowing. Uh, finite, it's fine. Uh, okay. You're not allowing uh, for randomized studies, right? Uh, or... Yeah, but it's turn based. So when it's turn based, you can. Uh... No, I mean, it, it's a fair end. It's very. So the fact that you don't need random strategy is because players play in turn. So, uh, so even if it's finite horizon, you have this. Uh, yeah. 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 But usually, you want to randomize when you have simultaneous play, uh, because you you don't want to be predictable. But here, you 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 are predictable somehow because uh, because uh, the other one knows your action before playing. But then what? You know sigma when you, I mean, in one case, tau knows sigma and knows the entire yeah, yeah. function, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's not, yeah. you also know the future place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's why it's also not, uh, not a piece. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know the strategy the other one, the best. Yeah, so for example, in, in chess, we know that there exists a strategy that, that either player one always win or player two always win, or uh, both players can guarantee a draw. But we don't know what is the uh, <laughs> So it's also useful. Philosophically, I think it's the No, it's the same. You are playing against the best player. As soon as your function is, yeah. your player function is measurable, which I think is okay. Yeah. Okay, so we want to prove that some function is constant, so we're going to, to take two different z. And let's assume that uh, uh, z, z prime is on the right. Z. And so you have Z here. And you have Z, Z prime here. Um, I can put it a bit below, but you don't say I'm cheating. Uh, Okay, so we are, we are going to do uh, the following. We are going to imagine that uh, player one plays a very stupid strategy. I mean, at least it's very simple. Uh, player one plays uh, top, always. And uh, player two is, uh, is, uh, is very smart, and uh, he plays uh, uh, optimally. In uh, in the game starting here, okay. So if you are not aware of all this concept of optimal, let's say that an optimal strategy is a player two is a strategy that uh, such that he gets at least the value. So player two maximizes. So it means that when he plays strategy, he will get at least whatever the other player does, he will get at least V of Z. Uh, so in particular, against this strategy, he will get at least uh, V of Z. So when one player one plays top, the thing is that uh, player two, he can only choose to go left or right. So typically, the path will be something like this. So it would be uh, left, right, like this. Could also go there, but here I had written something, so that's why I put it on the right, but it could really go uh, anywhere left, right. Uh, okay. Uh, can we say can we say something 
on um, if I take some uh, so Z prime here, can we, can I say something on the relation between V of Z and V of Z prime prime? And the answer is uh, is yes. Uh, I claim that. Um, V of um, V prime prime is larger than V of Z. Uh, I think intuitively it's uh, it's uh, rather uh, natural. Um, why? Because uh, you, you have to to think that player one is playing something very simple, very suboptimal, and player two is is playing smart. So player two should be advantaged in the game as the game goes. So it's natural to think that. Um, after any uh, finite number of steps, uh, V of Z, Z uh, prime prime uh, can only be a greater player to maximize it. So he can always improve, he will always improve his situation against someone that plays uh, something like this. And you can, to formalize it a bit, uh, you, you can do the following. So we are going to consider, um, so this strategy we will uh, we'll call it uh, uh, to. This is the name of the strategy. Um, and we are going to consider um, some strategy of, uh, of player one. That plays T until Z prime prime and then optimally. So it's like of a half smart strategy where you start playing something very simple top, and then when you reach Z, Z prime prime, you 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 revert, you you change, and you you play optimal. What can I say about uh, gamma of uh, Z? So the payoff starting from Z. When I play, uh, when player one um, plays sigma, so this, this new strategy sigma, and the player two plays uh, two. The thing is, we have considered a uh, limb soup criterion. So when you take the limb soup of, uh, of some I mean, it does not depend on uh, on any uh, on the first uh, n stages. So so all the payoffs that you get here, 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 all the costs, um, it's negligible. So gamma z of Sigma to is the same as uh, gamma z prime prime of uh, sigma to. But this thing is, um, uh, by definition, uh, it's uh, higher than uh, v of z because uh, to is optimal. And because uh, uh, sigma is optimal from z prime prime, uh, this thing is smaller than uh, v of z prime prime. So we got that uh, V of Z prime prime is larger than V of Z. So basically, I have created a path such that uh, the value is uh, only increasing in this path. That's just what I have. The one thing I don't understand, yeah. what is the strategy of, because Z prime prime is fixed. And, and then you're saying that the strategy is until Z prime prime. But how does it know that it's going to arrive at Z prime prime? Uh, so I'm supposed that pair two strategy is fixed. So, so pair two strategy ah, is okay. fixed. Okay. Yeah. And I start, I know that when I play T always, I reach Z prime prime. So, so then... yeah. OK, so. So now we are going to, um... OK, so let's. Uh... Let's say that this demonstration is over. So I'm going to do the same, but with bottom. So I will do uh, something like this. Okay, now, now it's uh, player, player one plays bottom, all right. Same argument uh, on any path, um, this will only decrease. And now I'm going to do a kind of um, 
kind of reverse argument starting from Z prime. I will say now that uh, it's player one that is smart. So player one plays uh, opt uh, from uh, from Z prime. And player two is uh, is simple and he, he plays uh, uh, L. Okay. So it will give some path like this. Okay. And eventually it will cross the other path. So let's call the Z0 the intersection. So this was uh, what is it? Um, and because I, I basically do the same things as here, and I just reverse the role of players, I expect that now the value is um, is now uh, decreasing along the along the plane. So if I have some uh, here, if I have some Z prime prime, it should be that uh, V of Z prime prime is smaller than uh, the of Z prime. Why? Because now it's player one that minimizes that is uh, very smart. And so uh, his situation will only improve around the game. So when we are here, uh, the value should decrease. It means that as a crossing point, we will have uh, that uh, since Z0 is in this path and in this path, we will have the, the inequality we want. So we will have that uh, V of Z0 uh, is uh, larger than V of Z. Uh, and is smaller than uh, Z of Z prime. And since uh, Z prime and Z play symmetric role, if I have inequality, I also will have the other one. Uh, so to summarize, uh, I have taken Z and Z, Z prime. And to prove that the value coincide, I've created a, a path from Z, such that the value is increasing on all the path, a path from Z prime where the value is decreasing. And, uh, and at the intersection, the, the point at the intersection should uh, satisfy both inequalities. And so I should get a relation between Z and Z prime. Is it OK? Um, it's not completely okay, by the way, because <laughs> <laughs> just to check that. Uh, but we're not in the panel. Yeah. So there is one thing that uh, it may not cross, no? right? It's that, I mean, I'm, I'm, of course, if I draw things like this, they would cross. But if we are very unlucky, um, uh, Like if we are um, very, very unlucky. Uh, for example, when player one plays the bottom, uh, we could get something like this, that go in this direction. Uh, and uh, here, we could also get uh, something like this, that like uh, two points that, uh, two paths that are parallel. Uh, but this point is easy to tackle because when uh, you know that uh, in a straight line, uh, the playoff will be on average, uh, I mean, the cost will be uh, just uh, p because you have uh, you have ID numbers here, zero and one. So when you take the average, you just get p, and here you would also get p. So in this very rare case, it's okay because then uh, the uh, the value will uh, instead of having v of z zero, we'll just have a p here. So it will be just the same. Just to take you that one, it works uh, completely. Um, how much time do I have? Uh, 15 more minutes. 15? OK. Uh, any question on this? So it was just to prove that V is, does not depend on Z. I will skip the part where, where I prove that V is deterministic, because it's, uh, I, it's just a, a standard argument, uh, because the, the environment is IID, so it's uh, ergodic. So, um, so the fact that V does not depend on Z will mean that uh, uh, like the, the, the event that V is larger than something is invariant by translation. So it, it has probability zero or one. So it means that uh, the value is constant. Yes. And it's a, it's a rubber. 
Strasbourg argument. Uh, I would like to pronounce something that is maybe uh, uh, like, which is I think really independent of game theory. I mean, um, so <laughs> because we know that V is a constant, so now the question is how much is V? I mean, what is V? Okay. So I think it's uh, it's quite nice. So let me first uh, introduce some uh, some numbers. So some uh, sorry some some concepts. So. I will call A uh, the event. Uh, there exists um, uh, a vertical um, a vertically uh, oriented uh, oriented path infinite composed. One. So what is that just a path? It, it's like a, you have to imagine that it's like a path where uh, where pair one will always pay stop. It's a, it's a bit like this. It's a, you can go uh, left right, but you cannot uh, go uh, go back. And you you do it in both directions. So it's, it's exactly uh, this, this is like a, a vertically oriented uh, path. Compose only with one. It's simply on both sides. Yeah, it's on both sides. Okay. Um, what do we know? Actually, we know that, I mean, for very classic uh, result in probability, that there is some uh, PST, so what they call the, the sorry, what people call uh, uh, the critical points, so there is some PST. Uh, that's that for um, all p larger than uh, six larger than pc the probability of a is equal to one and below pc it's um, uh, it's equal to zero okay, very classic and then people uh, ask uh, what is pc uh, what happens in terms of behavior of uh, the path uh, below PC, above PC, the, the other case being P equal PC. So that's a, that's a classical result in, uh, in priority. And uh, it kind of transmits to our game in the following uh, nice way. So the problem is the following. Um, v is equal to one. So I call it V now because V does not depend on Z, okay? V is like uh, the optimal uh, solution in terms of cost uh, of the game I define. So V is equal to one, if and only if P is larger than this. So it's, sorry, is that a question? No, 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 sorry. So yes, but probably maybe it's open, no? Zero and one is open. It's not neither zero nor one, the critical is. Ah, yeah, sure, sure. But I mean, it's in particular, it's in zero one. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Just, just no, no, okay, I agree. So there I is a page No, no, that's right. <laughs> yeah, but but I agree. Sorry, because otherwise it's not very dark. Well, no, but no. Yeah. So B, so B, I think, is 0 0.6. Okay. Yeah, no, but B, B is, uh, it probably is, it does not depend on, on the set, right? But uh, still random by in general. Well, I guess in the Ethereum say it's not. But, uh, no, it's not. Yeah. It's not a random value. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the problem was V doesn't depend on, on Z and it's deterministic, yeah. and I only showed the part where V does not depend on Z. Ah, okay. <laughs> so it's, it's nice that somehow it's directly related to PC, and uh, there is just one set that P is that here you, you see you have strict inequality. So at uh, the critical point, uh, you, uh, there is no percolation. There is no existence of infinite path. But in the game, uh, even for P equal PC, V is equal to one. So I guess this is, uh, I would not be able to say anything more than that. So let's show a bit the proof. I mean, at least draw some pictures.
So one, uh, one, I guess one easy case is uh, when, uh, when P is larger than PC. So we know that there exists an uh, infinite path. Okay, so I so I assume we we start from uh, from some point, and then okay, I assume that this path is on the right, for instance. Okay, so what do I do? I mean, I'm player two. I uh, I like uh, one because I maximize. Wait, don't you assume you start in the past if you, you already show that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I can assume that we, we start from the left. Like on the path. Can you assume that? Uh, because you said the. Uh... Yes. Yeah, I think that's yeah. yeah, very good. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Okay, so let's start. Um, okay, so what do I do? Well, uh, if I'm player one plays first, so if he plays top, I will go there. You, you have to, to remember that it's like, um, you know, the game is like um, each player chooses kind of half move. Like player one chooses uh, like this, and then player two has to decide this. And, so, uh, so if uh, if player one chooses this, uh, then the player two he just chooses this, and uh, if he chooses this, then uh, he goes there, and he ends up there, and if he chooses this, he goes there. So, in fact, this is exactly the right structure so that player one can uh, can so that player two can catch player one in this part. Okay. The claim is that uh, player uh, player two uh, can uh, can keep the token inside the path. It's okay. Okay, so this is uh, what we wanted to prove. Big part one. Uh, I have like five minutes, I guess. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. No. So maybe, yeah, P equal PC. So for P equal PC, this path disappears, but um, there is some uh, some recent uh, result by uh, by the mean. Uh, Sorry. Let's uh, yeah. say that um, uh, for our n, let me see if it's correctly. So there is some uh, some beta such that for uh, all n, um, the probability. That there exists um, a vertical path of length larger than n, such that uh, its center is at distance. Uh, Smaller than uh, n to the power one minus beta. This variety is that it's larger than uh, than uh, some exponential of
So what does it mean? It means that uh, if you are, uh, for instance, uh, in uh, some point here, uh, you want you are player two. You want to reach. Uh, okay, you, you don't have an infinite path, but uh, at least you want to to reach some path like this that is large enough. What what does it say? It says that there will be one of these paths that has a length uh, n with very high priority, like exponential uh, exponential uh, exponential priority. Uh, so that if you want to go there. You don't have to wait too much. Like you, you have something that is uh, sublinear, so n to the power one is beta. So if you are pair two, you if you play always right, you will reach this. Okay, you you may pay uh, n to the power minus beta uh, times uh, uh, times one, but uh, sorry, time uh, yeah, time uh, and so so you sorry you you would have n uh, a pair of n to uh, for one is beta zero, and then you will enjoy all the one during n uh, n stages. So you have to you have to sacrifice um, a sublinear number of uh, stages to get a linear number of stages. So it's a very good uh, trade-off. Okay, so so you do, and then I I do the what you have what you can do. You just have to to do like the so I call this the n strategy of uh, of pair two. Uh, reach uh, one path of length uh, larger than n, then uh, stay in it uh, as long as possible. So typically, if pair one is smart, we will we'll, we'll stay uh, in stage. And then what do you do? You you rest, you you start again. You should not start with n again because you you know this exponential. Uh, even if they are small, if you if you add them with the same n, they will uh, they will be large. So you you do n and then n plus one, n plus two. That that the series will uh, be converging. So what you do? So then you do like this, so you, you take some n, so you play the, the n strategy, then when you leave the, the, the path, you play uh, the n plus 1, and so on and so forth. Leaving the path and so on and so forth. And and basically with uh, with priority uh, larger than uh, one uh, minus uh, the sum of all this. One uh, will uh, guarantee. Uh, pair two, sorry, will guarantee one. Because with this strategy, you will um, uh, what will happen is that each each on each block, you will uh, you have you have to to you pay some cost of reaching the path. But rather than that, you get some uh, reward that is way larger than this one. And so the only thing bad that can happen to you is that somehow you don't manage to find such a path, that, that this event doesn't happen. But the point is that this uh, event happened uh, one time is just related to this, uh, this expression. And this, is, uh, this will be close to, to one uh, when, when n is large, very large. 
but it doesn't tell you that there is an optimal strategy. I don't know if you need. No, I was just trying to, I mean. Because you wrote the value in terms of mean and max, not yeah. in from soup. I don't know if it makes a difference, but you're saying that there's a sequence of strategies. I mean, this is a strategy that is uh, composed of blocks of strategy, but it's still a strategy. Yeah, but, but this one doesn't give you one because you still have a, a small probability. So it gives you one as you take capital N to infinity, right? Um, well, maybe I'm getting something wrong. You have a positive, have a positive probability of getting value equal to one. Yeah. But the, the, the value the is that is a yeah, sorry. No, so what, it's real one here because it's really, uh, okay. you do it infinity of n, so you will like, yeah. So it's, it's sorry, yeah, you're right. It so, work every time. so with point is positive, <laughs> you have two guarantees one, so yeah, you're right. With, with right. Is it a mistake? So. You can do it this way. You look for the first n right. such that this event happens. You know that there is an n such that this event happens. Probably it is going to see. Yeah, I'm sorry, maybe I'm no, I, I, uh, too I, sketchy. I, 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 understand. No, I agree that it's not fully algorithmic. Well, I, I get confused by the fact that I don't know. Like, it's not clear to me that a strategy that always gets one exists. Yes. Which is. So, but, but you can come from this there. So you look at the, you have to look at something in the environment. No, but the, the max mean is given the, the cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you look at the environment and then you look at, you know that there is an N such that there is this, uh, that there is this path. So, so this is the event that has probability one. There exists an N such that there is a concatenation of N, N plus one, N plus two. This N is random, but this has probability one, but that there exists one. And after so you, you after you found this n, the then you do the strategy. Right. And you could also decide to if the event doesn't happen, you just you you give up. <laughs> yes. No, yeah, but he wanted a strategy that would probably one gives you b equal. Well. Ah. I'm sorry, yeah, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, okay, so you answer for I think I won't. No, yeah, that's, that's what I should do. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but yeah, it's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, you answer the question before I, I manage to understand. Okay, I understand. Uh, yeah, I mean, and I think uh, I'm done with my time. So, so yeah, I mean, then for P smaller than PC, you can prove that uh, D is strictly smaller than one. And then there are also one result that says that when p is sufficiently small, uh, this time player one can get zero, which is not completely clear because the game is not symmetric because player one. Um, yeah, so thank you for your attention. So thank you very much, Bruno. So are there any questions? So you said you said earlier that the that in the other theorem, theorem you didn't show it here. Uh, you have that the, the value is deterministic. Yeah. It does not depend on the realization of the cost. Yeah. So then it would be enough to show that with positive probability the value is one. Yeah, yeah. Which is what yeah. Right? So so yeah. you don't have to do I mean with like this other result? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. It's enough to look yeah. 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 The positive probability yeah. doesn't have to be close to one, right? Yeah, but it has to be. No, with positive, positive probability, uh, the value is one. Right. But n, n has to, what I was confused about is n has to be large enough so that that thing is bigger than zero. Because of... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the, the sum has to be less than one. Yeah. yeah. Is the critical value of P known? It's just um, I think it's, it's not known, known, but it's uh, and there's some estimation that I don't remember. Okay. And and the proof of that existence of the uh, in what 
What technique does it use? <laughs> I'm just curious because I found it. No, I, I'm also very curious. So that's another thing. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, never. Is. I mean, I'm kind of new to this. I'm I come from the gate or. Ah. Maybe I will you knows more. Yeah, so I, I didn't hear the question. Uh, I was wondering what the technique of finding that critical value of p. So there's usually not a. I mean, the existence. What you do is because this is a direct interpolation. So you're going like this. Uh, what you can look at is a. Uh, you look at the point, which is. So so you look at so this height. So you look at the given height, let's say h, and then you look at the points at the rightmost point that is connected to the negative, uh, in, uh, to the negative start. So right? you start at height zero, you look at the paths that are negative, you look at the ones that is connected to highest, and then by uh, sublinear, uh, so so this Sorry. this is subadity ergodic theorem story. You see that there is a speed. Ah. Uh, if the speed is positive, so uh, uh, and you can show that this speed depends on p and it's monotone on p. Uh, and uh, you can show that pc is exactly the p such that the speed is zero. And because you can show that when the speed is negative, you will almost surely die. When the speed is positive, there is a positive probability of having. Great, thank you. I'm just curious, what, because you, you could consider another version of the game where player one chooses either top, top, bottom, left, well, left, right, and then player two has to choose whatever he, like one chooses in one coordinate and then player two has to choose in the, in the other coordinate, coordinate, which sort of breaks this structure of having vertical paths for I think. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering if one should expect to be the same. I'm sure understood. Uh, so in, 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 in this version, first, uh, there's an asymmetry between what player one does and player two does. Because okay. Player one is playing in one in one uh, direction, yeah. up or down, or left or right, I don't remember. Yeah. And player two is yeah, left right, yeah. the other one. Yeah. Right? I'm imagining a, a version of the game where player one is allowed to choose Everything. either top, down, left, or right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then player two has to choose one of the two options that remain available. Right. So maybe if player one chooses top, then player two gets to choose left or right. And if player one chooses right, then player two gets to choose up or down, okay. which is mm -hmm. more symmetric. And, and you sort of don't have the like, I think these arguments break down. Yeah. And I'm wondering if one would expect the same results. Yeah, I think, I think it's interesting. Uh, I don't know. I guess I would guess that it's still a question of finding the right path. You just have to figure out. So you have one monotonicity, like player one has more power than player two. So player one can win, that's for sure. What? So like player one has more power because he, like, he right. decides one direction and the other one has to decide between two. So for example, the argument for, for B right. equals zero still works. OK, maybe I was thinking about another game. Yes. So as I said, like one choosing the yeah, one so of the three direction. One, well, no, one of the four. Yeah. And the yeah. and then you have a player two has freedom. Just a perpendicular uh, perpendicular freedom. Ah, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, but it's true. Player one yeah. player has a lot more. That's a lot more power. So he still can if he wins in this game, he can win in the the other game. But I don't know if player two yeah. can force just, win. Because you still have a double infinite. Path, so maybe you could try to yeah. go there, but it has a different direction. Yes, because you anyway, I don't, I don't know. So the idea of the model was also that it's uh, amenable to right. standard results in back relation because we started with some model that was a bit different. Uh, and where instead of having such a path, you would have something with some thickness. 
but then in order to prove existence of such a path, you have to redo all the backlash and carry. But yeah, I think that there are many games that you can imagine. You can also imagine that the order is randomized. So yeah, maybe that's, that, that's a better way to think of it. Yeah. That also makes it more. So, are there any more questions in the chat? No. Or not on the chat, on the. No. If not, thank uh, Bruno again. Thank you. And 